designed to bring us to a shared understanding, a common starting place where we're talking about the context of youth un- and underemployment in the province. We have a lot of aligned interests, so I'm hoping that the discussion that we have here today will get us to identify some of the root issues and then identify ways that we can all work together to combat this. The recovery has not worked for young Ontarians. And what this has led to is we are essentially living in this province in two different economies. For adult workers, we're seeing unemployment rates which are similar to those of the national average. But for youth workers, we're actually seeing unemployment rates that are amongst the worst in the country. I'm here today to represent over 300,000 college and university students in the province, um, many of whom are struggling to find employment after graduating with mortgage-sized debts. I think that uh, students and young people in general uh, are facing a huge crisis. Young people have watched their futures being chipped away piece by piece by the very political forces that enjoyed strong social services, low tuition fees, and the promise of a meaningful and stable life. We don't have that promise anymore, and so I'm here to represent those students and also to talk about what can we do to ensure that promise is fulfilled. The nature of, of my local is that everyone is part-time. Um, our members have been there for 20 years. Um, but these are part-time positions, they're lower paid than faculty, and that's what you see with sessionals. And that's what you see with teaching assistants as well. It's you have to apply for a job every four months, and there's no, like, you never know where your next paycheck, if you're gonna have a paycheck in the next semester. So uh, the precariousness of young workers and, and what they encounter, even within the university sector, um, is a huge problem. It is estimated that over 300,000 positions are illegally misclassified as interns, trainees, or non-employees. Um, if interns were actually counted in those unemployment figures, it would be an increase of 4.5% to that unemployment rate. A lot of youth are actually dropping out to try to, you know, go to work, thinking that this is going to be only temporary. A lot of them actually, you know, stuck in uh, low-wage sector jobs and are not able to, to pursue post-secondary education. A couple of weeks ago, there was a series of articles in the Globe and Mail that said, young workers currently are frustrated with their prospects. Uh, what does that mean? They're actually turning to unions, or they're, they're turning to working together in their workplace and trying to create links uh, where they are. The biggest struggle is going, how do you pay the bills now? I'm not in a unionized shop, I'm not making high wages, so I'm in a casual workplace making six, six maybe six, six hours a week, eight hours a week. They basically have you running around making next to no money and even at the end of the day, you go through all of this to get to a full-time job that hardly pays. There's a systemic issue that we need to look at for unemployment. And we need to ensure that we are looking at the, 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 the most marginalized. Because if we look at, if we look for the lens of we are all equal and all young people have the same access to the same jobs, we've missed the book greatest benefit to the Ontario labor market may be to target the groups that are currently facing the most or multiple barriers for success. You target these groups, everybody else will have access. Sometimes it does bring me down that my that I'm not working where I, where I envisioned at my age where I should be, but at the same time I feel better knowing that there's so many people with more experience than I who face the same problems. So it's kind of like we're all just in this together. This idea came out of an OFL Young Workers Committee just last spring and it was not hard to find people to get on board to make this happen and we're really happy that UNIFOR, the Canadian Centre for Policy Alternatives, the Canadian Federation of Students, Canadian Labour Congress, the Ontario Federation of Labour, the United Food and Commercial Workers and Workers United Canada came together to make this event happen. It's clear that students and workers must stand united in their fight for a just and equitable system of post-secondary education and an economy that does not leave young workers out in the cold. We want to be part of a solution. We want to help form an agenda that leads us one day to say that, you know what, Ontario's solved the youth employment crisis. 